Hi, this is Maarten Baljauw from JetBrains. In this screencast, we'll have a look at the basics of .cover, a code coverage tool for .NET. .cover can be downloaded from the JetBrains website. The unified installer lets us select which JetBrains products we want to install. Once finished, a new menu item will be added to Visual Studio. All products can be found under the Resharper menu, and here's where we can find .cover. Code coverage tools analyze the lines of code covered for an application, either during a test run or when running and using the application itself. With .cover, we can start coverage analysis in two ways. By running the application and seeing which lines of code are being hit, or by running a series of unit tests and seeing which tests cover which part of our code base. This last option is probably the more practical way, as it can be automated and run on a build server like TeamCity for example. .cover comes with its own unit test runner that supports common unit test frameworks such as NUnit and MSTest. Using the extension manager, we can easily add support for other frameworks like XUnit, which we can install with the click of a button. Now let's see how we can run unit tests. If we open a class containing unit tests, we can see that .cover detects all test methods. From the gutter, we can use the test runner menu and choose how we want to run our test. We can run it, we can debug it, or run it with code coverage enabled. The .cover unit test explorer, which we can open from the menu here or using a keyboard shortcut, lets us see all tests in our solution. Now let's select one test project and run tests with coverage enabled and see what happens. .cover will run our tests and analyze which statements in our code have been covered by the tests that are run. In the coverage results, we can now see what percentage of our code has been covered by this test run. One thing I'll do here is exclude the unit tests from the results, as I'm only interested in which lines in our actual application were covered. Now let's drill down the tree here. For our application, we can see some classes only have partial code coverage, while others have full code coverage. We can double click a class or method in the tree and see exactly which lines of code have been and haven't been covered. Covered lines are marked with green, non-covered lines are marked with red. Or in other words, during test execution, the code in green has been run, while the code in red hasn't been run. An interesting thing about knowing which code has been executed by which tests, is that we can now also navigate to covering tests. Are you wondering which test is testing this exact statement? We can navigate to it from our code, using the context menu, or assigning a shortcut key like I did here. We can jump from our code to the tests. Now back to our coverage results. We are looking at a tree here, but we could also use the hotspots view. This shows us the classes that are riskiest. .cover calculates the complexity of the code in that class and verifies how much code is tested. The more complex the code and the fewer tests, the bigger it will show up in the hotspots view. The classes shown in here need additional testing, for sure. Now imagine we want to know which lines of code have been touched while executing a given use case when our application is running. Let's try that. Let's run our app with .cover analyzing which code is executed. From the menu, we can cover our startup project or a standalone application that runs on our machine, or even on a remote machine. .cover supports covering pretty much every .NET application, including web applications, .pf, Silverlight and Windows Store apps. Now let's cover our startup project. We can specify some additional startup options. For example, if we want to open the browser or not. What I want to know is which code is executed when visiting the about page of our application. So let's change the URL and maybe let's also change the browser. Clicking run will launch our application as well as a controller. If we want to start analyzing the data, we can capture a snapshot using this controller and then open the results in Visual Studio. This is a representation of the code that was executed when navigating to our application's about page. Again, we can filter and drill down into the results. We can save our snapshot, which will make it possible for anyone with .cover installed on their system to analyze the snapshot we've just captured. We can also export results to HTML, JSON, XML or NDPENS XML format. Let's see if we can export the current snapshot as HTML. Once saved, we can open it in the browser. Et voila! We can drill through all data in our browser now, and even look at the source codes. Thanks for watching, until next time!